September and beautiful weather here at Cedar Falls, Seattle City Light's oldest and longest continually operating hydroelectric project. I'm Sharon Bennett. And I'm Mike McClure. During this issue of NTV, we'll see upgrades here at Cedar Falls and peek into the future at our newest project, now under construction on the South Fork Toll. But the biggest news for City Light right now is the upcoming departure of Superintendent Roberta Palm Bradley. We talked to Roberta and want to share some of her thoughts with you. Well, when I came to City Light in 1992, in August of 1992, well, July, August of 1992, I had two things in mind and two objectives in mind. The number one objective was to sensitize the workforce and people here at City Light about the changes that were going on in the industry. I thought that was very important for us. The second thing was to do whatever we could to lay a framework for dealing with that uncertainty that will lie ahead for us in the industry. I feel that we have made great progress toward both of us, but now I feel employees are much more aware of what's going on in the industry, much more aware of the fact that we can no longer be insulated or isolated um, against what's going on in the industry around us. And I also am very proud of the fact that we have a strategic corporate plan that will help be the framework for dealing with that uncertain future. I think the workforce here is as solid as any in our industry. And if I look back at what particular events have impressed me most, I would say, and many of you, this will not come as a surprise, I've always had a bias um, in most of my career for the people who are the line workers of this organization. When I say line workers, not only the people who have that as a job title, but people who work on the front lines. And I have been very impressed during the inaugural storm, the kind of effort that people put in. I was very impressed by the professionalism, the skills of our people in the field. I was very proud to be the superintendent during that inaugural day storm. I was also, that was echoed by the third and cedar outage in which people working round the clock did Joe person's job in bringing our customers back online without injury and in very short order. Actually, we, be we beat our deadline. Those are the two events in my time here at City Light that have most impressed me, that the folks in the field um, and people who supported them were very focused on getting the job done. And we made ourselves proud, and I think we made the citizens of Seattle proud that to have a utility with people as professional as the ones that we do. So as I look back, as um, I guess that's a part of being in the industry, you look back at those times when you call on people's emergency skills. I was very proud to be the superintendent, definitely in both of those instances. And I take my hat off to the people in the organization who do have that focus on the customer. It really has been a pleasure being the superintendent of City Light. We've had some difficult times, and there will be difficult times in the, in the future. But I feel that this organization is well, well suited and, and well positioned to meet those uncertainties. So as they say on Star Trek, go forth and prosper. I hope to um, see you around Seattle over the next few years, and I wish, wish all the people here at City Light the very best. You know, Cedar Falls has been running here through many changes at City Light, and now it's being upgraded for more efficient operation in the years ahead. Right, Sharon. Cedar Falls began operating back in 1905. The earliest generators were replaced in the 1920s, and while Unit 6 has had minor upgrades, it's now undergoing the first major overhaul, part of a maintenance plan to increase efficiency in all our generating facilities. One of the two main shaft bearing pedestals was put back in late August after the stator iron and coils were replaced. City Light's electrical and mechanical engineers, machinists, electrician constructors and helpers were all part of the Cedar Falls upgrade. When the turbine is reassembled and Unit 6 is up and running again, it will increase the average efficiency by 4%. Added efficiency is what it's all about. This turbine runner, for instance, which will be going back into Unit 6, uh, uh, 
turbine next month um, was designed uh, by uh, finite element computer modeling to uh, be significantly more efficient than the old runner that was designed in the 20s that it replaced. Uh, not only is, uh, is the design superior, but uh, the materials will also make the runner more resistant to cavitation and corrosion than the old runner, so it should uh, um, hold up better and require less maintenance. When work on Unit 5 is done next year, Cedar Falls will generate more power, about 3 million kilowatt hours per year with the same amount of water, while reducing energy losses in the turbine and generator. Other upgrades at Skagit and Boundary will add as much electricity as will be produced by the newest plant being built on the South Fork Tolt. Activity is increasing as the pipeline is put into place above the powerhouse site at the South Fork Tolt. The trenches are open and prepared, and the five miles of pipeline, some going down steep grades, is now being put into place. Placement is critical, and work is sensitive because of close proximity to the water department pipeline here that provides one-third of the drinking water to the city and surrounding communities. This might be the last hydro project that we do. Uh, I know you people up in the Skagit uh, think that that's the way the world is, but it's not that way all over the world. Uh, we, we do have to uh, be concerned about damming up rivers like we did in the past, and so this may be one of the last things we can do. So I think the interesting thing about it, it is the joint effort between all of the agencies, the water department, and city light in getting this job to even off the ground. And even though we've started, it still isn't easy. Every day there's an issue we have to deal with rock excavation, and pouring concrete to prepare for the powerhouse foundation is another part of the work now taking place. Another important consideration at the South Fork Tolt is environmental stewardship. Part of it includes ensuring a safe habitat in this salmon and trout rearing area where the river return will be built. City Lights receive significant grants to add to the Tolt watershed improvement, and we'll hear more about that on an upcoming NTV. Up at the Skagit, upgrades in the Diablo powerhouse and switchyard continue. And early one morning this summer, a huge transformer made its way into Diablo, bound for its new home in the Diablo switchyard. We'll continue with updates on work at the Skagit over the next couple of months. Mike, I know you're someone who spends a lot of time at your computer. Right, Sharon. And if you're a regular City Light computer user, you know the utility has several different systems in place. The utility is now restructuring how our information technology functions can be organized more efficiently in the future. The information technology reorg will move all computer systems to a common platform, establish common hardware and software standards, and centralize some functions and staff to reduce operating costs. The IT reorg reorganization effort is only attempting to pool resources to make uh, better use of skills uh, across the department that are now distributed and uh, to make uh, better use of the, utility, of the utility's uh, investment in, um, you know, in computing technology. Um, we want to help you work smarter. Um, it's uh, the centralization uh, may, uh, uh, may make some people feel uncomfortable in terms that uh, they think they're going to be losing something if they don't have it sitting uh, in their unit at that time. But, um, I, I think in the long run it'll be better for the utility, the utility will have better visibility of what it's doing, you know, with regard to IT services when you have it in one place and uh, when you can hold an organization like STP accountable. Customers and users are being kept informed through a series of brown bag lunch meetings and user input is important. The impact on people as far as the organization is concerned is that they're going to have to work together and put good plans in terms of training, implementation goals, and support functions together. Some people will realize that they won't get everything that they want, but I think that what they will do is adapt to the information that's available, and they will adapt to the climate and really like it. Watch for future technology updates. They'll be coming soon to a workstation near you. Well, making improvements and saving money is at the heart of the Bright Ideas Suggestion Program. And several City Light employees were honored by the City Suggestion Program and took home cash awards for their money saving ideas.
There were lots of smiling faces around the City Light Building and at the service centers on August 17th when family members joined employees to learn more about what we do at City Light in the course of a day's work. Special visitors welcomed and charmed little ones in the early morning. Others got a lift that was out of the ordinary. And everyone agreed that it was a great way to beat the summer heat and share our work with our families. One family in particular has been very much on the minds of people at City Light lately. Mi Vang's family was with her at City Light on August 10th, which was Mi Vang Day at the utility. Mi Vang was injured in January, and colleagues turned out in force to support a fundraiser with great food, an auction, and entertainment. Nearly 350 people attended and raised more than $11,000 for the fund to help Mi Vang, her husband Fu, and their four children. Thanks to all the volunteers and supporters. There's a bright spot at the North Service Center these days. Thanks to an enthusiastic employee who's also an avid gardener. Meter electrician Tex Bardwell spends her break time tending her dahlias at the North Service Center. Last year, when it looked like this flower bed would be bare, a creative solution was found. Pam Larson, one of the gardeners here, approached me and she said that, uh, that their budget was a little short that year and that they would really like to put something in that would make a nice display. She knew that I raised show dahlias, and she asked me if I'd be interested in planting a few plants, which I did. When, the first year I planted out here, I only had uh, 38 plants. And uh, the results were so magnificent that, uh, that the following season they decided to remove the shrubs, put them somewhere where they'd be much happier. City Light benefits with a beautiful array of flowers during the summer, and Tex finds it a relaxing way to spend her breaks. The flowers are in full bloom through October. If you're in the neighborhood, drive by the North Service Center for a real visual treat. Well, that's it for this edition of NTV. From Cedar Falls, I'm Mike McClure. And I'm Sharon Bennett for Network on Television. See you next time. Bye-bye.